Hi everyone, as we're boarding our plane today, I'd like to welcome you guys back to another Aerosoft CRJ video, this time in the CRJ 700 with non-stop service from Albuquerque, New Mexico, up to uh, over to Phoenix, Arizona, courtesy of SkyWest in the American Eagle livery. I hope you guys enjoy this flight today. Uh, the weather is a normal desert weather. I'm using the SoFly Preset Pro and I've selected desert weather for this entire flight. So I'm going to hop in the cockpit and get things um, situated with the EFB and also the FMS and we should be out of here in no time. I hope you guys enjoy. Here we are in the cockpit of the CRJ 700 and the first thing that I want to do is let's go to our index and uh, just so the aircraft knows our position. That looks good. And again, our sim brief route is loaded into the work folder. We do that before we hop into a Microsoft Flight Simulator. So all I'll need to do is uh, put in the uh, codes and our route should pop up. So here we go. That's for Albuquerque and here is Phoenix. So we have everything there. Click root, root loaded. That's what we want to see. Now I'm just going to uh, check departure. So runway 21 is what we're taking off on. Largo 3 departure. That is correct. Let's check our arrival. ILS for runway 8, correct. And Eagle. So over to the legs page and we're just checking to see if any discontinuities, which we do have some. We hit the next button here. So Zun, we're gonna click that and then we're gonna click the previous page and fill that in to get rid of that discontinuity. All right, the rest of the leg page is looking good. Just gonna get rid of this vector right here. So our first fix will be Zun today. No problem at all. Next, we're going to performance in it. And before I do anything here, I'm just gonna hop over to the EFB to get uh, some of these performance numbers filled in. All right, and looking at our EFB, the number of passengers that we're gonna have today is 72. So let's go in here and click enter. Forward cargo, aft cargo, we're just gonna keep that the same. As far as fuel, fuel is gonna be 460, 400, 668 kilograms. Click enter. There we go, and I'm just going to set payload in simulator. And I'm also going to uh, copy performance init data to FMS. So now if I go back to the EFB, the numbers are filled in for us. And all we need to fill in is the cruise altitude, which today's cruise altitude is flight level 340, 34,000 feet. Easy enough. I'm just going to leave the alternate cruise altitude out. We're not going to need the alternate cruise. So execute and now over to the VNAV setup. Trans transition altitude in the USA is 18,000 feet. Looking good. Over to the next page. Good there. And VNAV descent. Looking good there. So back to performance in it. Let's hit the next page there. Right, our average wind for today's flight is going to be minus 46. So I'm just going to go M46. Actually, let me clear this out. M46. There we go. We're going to click execute and over to the next page. And here we have our uh, ETA. So if I put in the estimated time of departure in here, it's going to give us the ETA of when we can expect to get into our uh, destination. So the time right now is 1814 Zulu. And my expected destination is 1832 Zulu. So let's just put in 1832 and see what it gives us. So expected time of arrival is 1947 Zulu, which is 1.47 in the afternoon in uh, Phoenix. So that looks good to me. Let's keep that in there and hopefully let's stick to our uh, plan. So back to the uh, performance page. Flex temp, we're gonna leave flex temp alone. So it looks like the uh, FMS is looking good. 
Uh, one more check. Let me just make sure I put in the uh, cruising altitude. Pretty sure I did. Yep, cruising altitude right there. Let's go to the legs page. All right, and the legs page is looking good also. All right, so back over to the uh, EFB. It uh, calculated our speeds. We're going, uh, conditions are dry. We're going flaps eight. And we have all our speeds here. Rotation speed at 131 knots. And I'm just going to click set all. And we should see it over here in the PFD. And all of the speeds are there. And let me just change my altimeter. All right, altimeter is going to be 30.30. .30. All right, back to the checklist. So we are prepared to uh, taxi. So let's take these uh, chalks off, get the doors closed. No need for these to be open, but before I disconnect the ground power, I would like to put on the uh, APU. So here we go, power and fuel and APU start. And we can see the APU starting down here. APU at 97%, APU at 100%. So now since it's at 100%, uh, ground power is disconnected. Passenger door, we can close that. Close all of the passenger doors, service door as well, and passenger door. Smoking sign on, seatbelt sign on. And we are preparing to taxi. Uh, no need to get a pushback, we can just uh, taxi directly out of here. So let me consult the checklist. And then we'll let, I'll uh, see you guys when it's time to uh, start these engines up. All right, everyone, I am back and I'm ready to uh, start this uh, bad boy up. So beacon light coming on. Just so everyone knows that we're about to start the plane. And let's start engine number two first. So when the NG reaches uh, 20, we're going to uh, just throw this... Uh, right engine into idle and we can see it right here build up and that's 20 let's click the red button and throw this into idle right and as that builds up to save some time just going to start engine one and my taxi lights are coming on flaps going down to uh, eight There we go, flaps eight, and both engines are stabilized. So there we go. Let me just make sure they're in idle, and they are. And again, I'm having trouble with these, the uh, window heat. So if anyone watches this and knows how to get the window and windshield heats on, I'd be happy if you left a comment and let me know, because I'm pretty sure it's these right here. But this won't do anything, and when this button clicks in, it does nothing. Uh, probe heats don't take those off. So the passengers in the back are going to freeze on the way to Phoenix, but we're in a warmer part of the uh, part of the country, so hopefully it's not too bad. All right after start checklist, generators auto, electrics check, bleed valves auto, packs on, APU can come off. Right, nose wheel steering on. No need for anti-ice out here. Taxi checklist trims in the in the green. Oh, we have to do our trims. Um, thrust reversers armed. Let's arm those thrust reversers. Looking good. Light instruments brake temp good. So now just the trims, and then we can uh, take off. So performance tells us trims over here somewhere. Here we go. 7.2 on the trim is what we need. We're at 6, so here we go, let's put that up to 7.2. And there we go, 7.2, and now we are officially ready to taxi to runway 21. So some throttle coming in there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my clock. All right here we go, park and brake off. Alright, with 3 minutes to go before our scheduled departure time. I'm curious to see if we're going to get off the ground in time, but anyway, I will see you guys when I'm holding short of runway 21. Welcome back everyone, holding short of runway 21 here at Albuquerque.
just going to do our final checks for uh, before takeoff. So if we go up here to our checklist, do before takeoff fuel flow, fuel X flow manual. So let's change that fuel X flow. Flight attendant advised. Transponder TCAS set good. Uh, terrain display set and cast checked. So next will be the climb checklist and here we go landing lights coming on taxi can go off wing light on and strobe on everything else looks good and I'm just gonna change our departure time to uh, it's gonna be now 1036 so if I go back in here to the performance page performance in it performance in it Go here 18 so I'm gonna do 1836 just to get it a little closer so we'll be uh, landing at about 1951 which is 151 in the afternoon we've been cleared for takeoff so here we are taxiing out to the runway and uh, remember rotation speed is 131 all right let's see if this one is better than my first uh, takeoff in the uh, CRJ 550 and while I was taxiing I hit this top screw right here just to put us in takeoff mode which you can see right here and all that does is align the uh, the flight director with 10 degrees of a uh, nose pitch up here we go taxiing out onto the runway and rotating at 135 so I is going to be on the speed as we control the plane on the ground with the rudders and rotate positive rate gear coming up and we can start our turn and I put it back into climb mode let's adjust some of this pitch and let's engage that speed we can put the speed up to uh, 250 that's what we're gonna be under 10,000 feet turn on the nav mode And finally, since we look like we're aligning with it, I'm just going to uh, hit the autopilot button. And there we go. Now the uh, autopilot is going to pitch the plane up to uh, hold that uh, speed of 250 knots as I put all of the flaps up. And we are off to Phoenix. So now I'm just going to consult the uh, checklist again. Climb checklist, bleeds and APU, set thrust re thrust reversers off. APU set, and let me just turn these reversers off. Alright, we are good to go guys. We have crossed 10,000 feet a little while ago, but no harm done. So landing lights coming up, and also the wing light is going to come up. Uh, when we cross to when we cross through 20,000 feet, I'm just going to uh, take the uh, seatbelt sign off and let the passengers roam around because we should be a little stable then, and cabin should start um, serving drinks. Welcome back, everyone. We finally reached our cruising altitude of flight level 340. If we look down here at our estimated time of arrival, our estimated time in route. Excuse me, we have about an hour and three minutes left. I will see you guys when it's closer to uh, getting ready for descent. I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, welcome back. We are close to descending. If we take a look at our display, top of descent is in two minutes, approximately 44 nautical miles. If we uh, look in direct intercept page, it's going to give us the profile of... Um, our descent rates right here we have 1100 feet going down there but we're not going to look at that when we cross top of descent we should see the snowflake finally I didn't see it last time and also a blue circle right here 
that tells us what we sh what our descent rate should be. So uh, I will see you guys again when that happens. Hi everyone, we've finally begun our descent into the Phoenix area. Let's look down at our FMS. Let's see how uh, much longer we have of this flight. Estimated time, of course. So the calculations say we should be arriving in about 12 minutes. I'm going to take a good guess and say that it's not going to be 12 minutes, maybe 20, but we'll see how things go. Let's just uh, keep on with our descent, and I will see you guys when we get a little closer. We're going to put the passenger signs on at about 20,000 feet, passing down through 20,000 feet, landing lights at 10,000. So we'll see how things go up here, and I will see you guys shortly. Hi everyone, passing through 20,000 feet, so seatbelt sign has just come on. We also hit a little turbulence that's always expected over these uh, mountains out here. So what I'm going to do now is just check the the uh, descent checklist or be yeah descent checklist first. Fuel was checked, TCAS check, radar good, cast check, landing data. I have to set that and approach brief was complete. So I just have to set the landing data. Right, landing elevation for runway eight at uh, Phoenix International is. 1,111 feet. So let's go ahead and put into the landing elevation. 1,111. So I'm going to go 1,120. That looks good. All right, we are crossing 10,000 feet. And that means our external lights can come on. Landing lights on. The wing light can come on as well. Let's head over to the EFB. We can go through our before landing checklist, passenger signs on, thrust reversers. We're going to arm those. Let's go over here and arm those. Back to the EFB landing gear down in time. Slats flaps. We're just lowering our speed to 210 knots. Right, looking at the EFB, we're going to uh, head over to the performance tab. We have our landing speeds are calculated for us already. So what we're going to do is just set all and it's going to throw it on the PFD. So there we go, landing speeds calculated. And my approach speed today is going to be going to go down to, uh, going to approach at about between 140 and 160. Yesterday I did 140 and it just seemed to be, uh, the plane seemed to be stalling even with all my uh, my flaps down. Right, my speed bug is now on 160 and I'm just going to start pulling back on the throttle to lose some of this speed. I may need the speed brake. Let's go ahead and uh, use the speed brake. There we go. Right, going to flaps 8. Let's put some more throttle in here. Just want to hold my speed at about 170 right now. See, the speed comes down quick. Right, we are getting close to the airport. Another notch of flaps coming down. So that's going to be 20. Right, we're just above 160 knots. That is good for now. I'm going to keep it right there gonna let the aircraft do its thing we have the uh, ILS dialed in we did that uh, before we started our descent so I may give this a go again it depends on the sharp turn that we take because yesterday it seemed that the ILS messed up because of the sharp turn and when I engaged the approach hold so I may not touch the uh, approach hold this time I mean the vis visibility isn't bad so as soon as I see the runway I'll have no issues with landing the plane. And I think for this this flight I'm going to leave the um I'm gonna leave the approach hold alone. Here we go, making our turn. Just gonna throw the altitude down to uh three thousand. So the next fix is Jamal. It's gonna be uh four thousand feet. So I'm just going to engage my vertical speed and put that down what I'm gonna do here 25 knots of flaps it's tough when we come in at angles like this not the prettiest of approaches but it's definitely gonna get the job done so there we have the runway in front of us up there so when I get to about a uh, 3,000 feet I'm going to drop my gear 
or maybe a little before 3,000 feet. When we get to the what's up, the what's up fix, I'm going to drop my gear, which is about three nautical miles, I believe. All right, we're stable now. This is good. All right, clear to land runway eight. Gear coming down, and we're going full flaps. Let's put some throttle in there. And just adjusting the trims as we come down. This runway is more than 11,000 feet long, so I'm there, there's going to be no problems with getting this on the ground. And here we go, we are over the numbers, power coming out. Hold it off, hold it off. And touchdown. And nose wheel is down. took us just under an hour and a half to get in here today. Let's head over, over to the gates. Flaps coming up. Landing lights up and taxi light on. We can take that wing light off and strobes off. Let's not forget about the thrust reversers. All right, everyone, we've made it safely to Phoenix. Thank you for flying along with me again on this uh, second adventure that I've had in the new Aerosoft CRJ. I will see you guys on the next episode, and you can guarantee that there will be a next episode. Till next time, Aviator Sim is out of here. <laughs>